Hi, and welcome. Thank you for joining me on Where Are They Now? I have the distinct pleasure of uh, my special guest, Bruce Byam, from the class of 1963, joining me today. Thank you, Bruce, for being here. Heather, thank you so much for asking. It's, uh, it's a real pleasure to be here, and uh, um, I love Chelmsford, so this should be a great, great show. <laughs> <laughs> from start to finish of your high school, right, from the start yeah. of your... Right. Education, it was all in Chelmsford. Yes, yes. Right through to high school. What was the difference? Um, I know it was a little bit smaller back then, um, but just the gradual um, movement for your class of 1963 going through from school to school. It was uh, a wonderful experience, obviously, and so many friends went uh, 12 years with me and friends today. We still get together. Uh, it's a terrific group. I was blessed with uh, being in a great class. Uh, good people, uh, just a lot of fun. Uh, enjoyed the uh, experience all the way along. We had some great teachers. Yeah. Uh, went, to, I think, to every school in the town, including Quessy and East and uh, you name it. I, I have summer school. I imagined to spend uh, at least one year in all those places. So you and went to all of them? I did. Marlin. And opened the new high school, uh, yeah. first class to go four years at the new high school. And uh, then, uh, which is McCarthy today, but right. that was the new high school at the time. And where was the old high school? Uh, it was on uh, Bill Ricker Road. Uh, okay, so it's, now, it's now the town offices. Right, so McFarland back in the Yes, city, basically right? right there. Yep. Yeah, I went through McFarland. Went yeah. through, it was just uh, one school after another. Right. But when you got to the high school, though, you already seemed to know everybody. Was there any kind of adjustment period when, again, new school or any of those kind of things for you guys? Well, the adjustment, I think, Heather, uh, basically was the uh, fact that we brought all the town now together. Uh, I was in a few years, I just said, four-room school. Yeah. And then when you get to high school, you bring the people. Unfortunately, the people from north had to join us. Uh, <laughs> but seriously, some you know, great people. And the people from all, all around the town. It, it just made it a very inclusive group of people. Uh, when, in ninth grade, did you really know what you wanted to do? Or was it going to be one of those things as far as your future? Just where did you think you were going to go from ninth grade and, and, and weaving your way through high school? I, uh, I hoped I could stay somehow connected with education. I had some great role models as teachers. Uh, and uh, I wanted, I, at first I thought I wanted to be in phys ed. And uh, that's where I thought I was going to go. But I wasn't really sure. I had a lot of things that I, I thought of. And, uh, but education was primarily the, the number one thing. Now, was it phys ed because you liked the playing sports? Yes, um, sports. Was there a sport in particular at Chelmsford? Yeah, basketball was my uh, go-to sport. I loved football. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I wore the thickest glasses you could possibly wear. <laughs> the first two practices, I broke them. And my dad said, that's it. You're going to have to play basketball and no more football. So I uh, gave up football, and I'm not sorry. I went to basketball, which uh, was a blessing. Uh, just and back then, we had some great years. Uh, terrific. I'm, I'm going to boast. I thought the class of 63 the, that year, I thought that was the best basketball team in Chelmsford's history. Uh, I, and I rode the bus. I wasn't a driver. Uh, Hank Brown was the driver and just an incredible athlete, uh, basketball track, you name it. And he carried us along to the, uh, through the tournament. It was a tech tournament at that time, right. divided into classes A to D. And we were in Class C, and we fortunately were able to win the Class C championship. And um, that team, not only with good players, but good people. Just and that usually stems from a coach. Yes, Henry McCarthy uh, was the guy that he was the uh, leader of the pack, so to speak. Um, we, we really thought highly of Henry. He had a great uh, basketball knowledge. His father started the Tech Tournament, so f how much fun was it for us to win the Tech Tournament for his son while his father was still alive? I yeah. mean, that, that's now, a great story. Was he a story. teacher, too, at the school? Henry? Yeah. Yes, he was, a phys he was in phys ed and okay. at the high school. So yeah. that was one of those things that you that was one of the a role model catches. kind of thing. That's right. Um, that's right. When, when you talk about that, though, was there uh, a bond, though, because you guys all seem to have played probably through and we, just... We did. We started uh, basically pick up in seventh and eighth grade, but we yeah. went right through high school together. 
but if we hadn't started high school with a new addition from Maine, this big gawky looking kid came into Chelmsford High School, and that's Hank. Um, we, we would have been good, I think, but not, <laughs> not champions by any means. So how was that? How was that bringing in? Like when, when you have a tight-knit group, right, uh, and you bring somebody in, yeah. um, although we all say it, you know, there's something special. Either you lived in Chelmsford right. or you've grown up in right. Chelmsford, and there's always right. something special. So how was that? How was that bringing somebody new into the fold? Well, I think we looked at him a little bit strangely at first because we didn't know that this he was as a good a basketball player as he turned out to be. And, but he's such a good person. I mean, he ended up being the senior class president. So you know that in four years, he just fit right in beautifully. Correct. Uh, he's just a, just a good person, good guy. And as you were also in high school, um, you thought about phys ed and those kind of things. Right. But who were some right. of the other teachers that just kind of had an impact that you thought, well, you know, education is, is kind of for me? Well, education, uh, George Simonian, uh, obviously. I mean, I, that, everybody probably could say that. Right. Um, I, I can remember his classes today and how, how good he was, how energetic, I, the enthusiasm he brought. Um, I wasn't the best biology student in the world, that's for sure, but uh, he, he was terrific. Um, people like, uh, I'm trying to think of some of the other people, um, Ed, Ed Quinn, um, Leo King was a math teacher at the time in Chelmsford High School. Um, just, just a lot of other people that... Uh, now you brought up Mr. Quinn, and obviously I yeah. have Mr. Quinn. And is, is, yeah. it, is it kind of funny to reflect back, because I think about it sometimes, where you think these people that are giving you all this knowledge yeah. seem like so much older. Yeah. But in reality, yeah. they're not they that. They weren't. <laughs> they weren't. Yeah, absolutely right. And I don't know if you have this problem, Heather, that I have. Um, it's meeting George and Ed and, and what do I say? Is it Mr. Quinn? Is it Mr. Simone? And, you know, how do, you, how do I address these people? It, yes. it was, and, and as you said, they're contemporaries, really. Uh, right. A little bit older, obviously, but um, it, that, that was a hard one for me. They were. Right. But know. they're really not that much older. It's kind no, of just a strange no. thing. Sometimes you, you meet a coach and you thought, yes. oh, my God. Yeah. But they have all this wisdom and I have none. Yeah, and then, oh, and then yeah. as, so as the smart. time, time moves, yeah. You're, yeah. you're closer and closer. Yeah. So after Chelmsford High, though, you went off to Lowell. Yeah, University of Lowell. It was yep. Lowell State at the time. Yep. Um, that was, again, to pursue education. Yeah. Um, I thought of Central Connecticut State the University. They had expressed some interest in uh, scholarship, but I just didn't want to leave at that time. I, I wanted to stay local. I, so I went to Lowell State, played a year over there uh, at, at Lowell. Uh, it, was, it was a great experience. Met some great people there. Got my master's from Lowell about uh, three years later in education. And went to Acton Boxborough, of all places. <laughs> Just <laughs> I, down the street, one of our that's rivals. Right. But I, yeah. that's a, well, big rival. And I had a chance to, to teach in Chelmsford, but... Uh, I just thought maybe living here and knowing so many families and things, I thought maybe it would be best for me to uh, try, stay close, but try somewhere else. So over to Acton Boxborough I went. Lo and behold, did I know that they were going to become an arch rival of, of Chelmsford down the road. And um, just a great town. Can't say enough about the school system, the people. But you didn't go into phys ed. What did you say? I went into uh, elementary education. I was yeah. a, ended up being a sixth grade teacher for 35 years. And, yeah. Uh, just loved it. It was, it was a wonderful experience. But also coaching? I coached. I coached uh, at Acton Box where I coached basketball. Um, I was a junior varsity coach at the time with a gentleman by the name of Larry McNulty who was dynamic basketball coach. He was terrific. Uh, he was about six foot six, came out of Boston University. The first thing he did in every game was the first call that was made. I think Larry went over to the official and he stood <laughs> over him, sort of intimidated him in the only way Larry could. But um, I worked with him for four years and that was fun. I yeah. just really enjoyed that. And we were successful. We did, uh, we did well. Uh, did you feel like, do you feel like that you were always thinking about how you played or the experiences that you had? I did. I brought a lot of Henry stuff with me, um, drills, practice times, uh, along with what uh, Larry wanted to do. Um, so I learned from two really uh, pretty good guys in, in the basketball world. And then I finally got wise enough, Heather, where I realized that uh, 
you know, the only guys that go home at night without really feeling badly are, are the officials. <laughs> <laughs> so I became a, a board certified uh, basketball official, uh, local board 95 here out of Lowell. I uh, did that for 15 years uh, and really had a fun career. Met some Jim Sizzik, uh, a terrific person. He was uh, on the board with me, Larry Cavanaugh. Uh, got to do a game with Patrick Ewing, was one of the highlights of my life. Um, he was, at, at the time, he was at uh, Cambridge. Cambridge Vision, Vision Lab. That's right. That's, yep. You know. I know. I've, uh, we played the, the girls team down there when, when I think he was there. But yeah. Probably. Yep. Yeah. And uh, he, he, he was... You know, he was just a freak of nature, a basketball yeah. freak, and just a, a really very quiet, very well mannered. Um, Mike Jarvis was his coach, another guy that went on to go to, I think it was George Washington University, where he ended up, and, yep. uh, also successful. But that was kind of the highlight. I did some college games, but mostly uh, high school basketball, and met some great people, really good people. Now Obviously, I'll, I'll bring it up because now we're losing officials like crazy, but I just, yeah, uh, like, yeah. what was your draw to go away from coaching? And in, in, it, was it really just the, you didn't want to pull your hair out as a coach and, and that was part you'd of rather, it. rather get yelled at as an yeah, official? Yeah, it was part of it. It was, a, it was a huge time commitment. You know, you start right. November. If you're successful, you go right into the middle toward end of March. Yep. Um, I was starting to have a family. And just the time away from them, the, uh, that was another part of what made me go into officiating. It's a, it's a quick two-hour night, and you're, yep. back, you're back home again. So giving back to sports that yeah, you love. Yeah, I but... stayed with basketball, and I, right. I just kind of enjoyed it. It was a, it was a good way to uh, uh, stay in it. Just, uh, so first, first, first day on the job, sixth grade? Sixth grade. Did you th did you think you were going to make it in education, no. <laughs> or did you start to to say what what did I get myself into? One quick funny story. Uh, I'll try to make it quick. It was, I walked into the classroom first time in my life, and there was this young man, sixth grade now, yeah. st staring up at me, all wide eyed. He was uh, neat as a pin, uh, just a great looking young man. So. We uh, and, and he loves sports, so I had a connection. I had somebody that I could talk to and connect with. And Heather, um, I don't know how many years later it was, but he became a principal in Westford, and he hired my daughter. Really? So talk about coming full, full circle. And he swears to me that he didn't do it because of me. We had kept in contact all yeah. these, those years. Yeah. We communicated, we played golf together. Uh, Kevin turned out to be just a, a phenomenal person, and um, he, Crystal went for an interview, and she said, Dad, you won't believe it. I had an interview with Kevin Regan, and I said, oh, I can't believe that. I said, I hope it works out for you, and it did. And what was his, the principal's name? Kevin Regan was oh, his okay. name, and he uh, just retired about oh, two yeah. years ago out of, out of Westford, and just, yeah. a, just a good guy. So it's just a kind of a... Talk about circular. Is, is, why did you, is, did your daughter, your daughter went into teaching. Yes. How did, and so it was just more of the influence or did your parents, were they educators? No, my parents were not. My mother was a homemaker, basically. Yeah. My dad was a firefighter. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, so you did steal the education from teachers that you... Enjoyed, yeah, exactly. But then exactly. She, she aspired to be a teacher because of you? Well, partially. She, yeah. You went to uh, college and she swore she was not going to teach. <laughs> it's one of these, I got out of, got her, got her degree and turned around and said, uh-oh, what do I do now? Yeah. So she kind of realized that she needed a job and she went back and got her master's in education and started to teach. And she's been teaching about, uh, I think, 14 years now she's been teaching and uh, and she is in Westford still. Yeah. Yeah. So she, she enjoys it. Uh, it's great. Um, she, I think she does a good job too. So sometimes when you go away, you know, you, you can't come back to Chelmsford, right? That's but right. That, but yeah. that's not really the truth, right? So no. you've had great, great results in those kind of things. What was the call like when when you found out you were going into the Hall of Fame for Chelmsford? Um, uh, beyond belief, honestly, I, I really, uh, I was telling Bob, uh, Bob Paraso, Hall of Fame member, that uh, I counted the number of people from the class of 63, and there, were, there are 18 of us presently. Um, I, I think that's the highest number from one class. 
Uh, in Bob's defense, 64, there are, he is number two. So okay. we'll keep him number two. <laughs> but it was a, to answer your question, it was, uh, it was really kind of a dream come true. I really, uh, I, I knew the people, the caliber of people, the quality, uh, the inductees. And as Judge Simonian talks about often, uh, it's not an athletic Hall of Fame. It's an inclusive Hall of Fame of all kinds of abilities and people, and that's what I think makes it separate and, and separates it from uh, a lot of other Hall of Fames. Uh, but it's special because you're still giving back, right? I mean, and now you're calling yeah, games. Yeah, yeah. For... Football has been become my passion. Uh, I started going to games, and um, then I, I, an opportunity came. Bruce Rich called me one day. He was the head coach at the time, and he said, uh, would you be interested? They're starting a cable broadcast of football games. Would you be interested in... Uh, doing something like that. And I said, yeah, I think I would. So I started that in uh, 2001, and I've been doing it since. And if I make it through this year, this is probably going to be my last season, um, I will uh, have uh, 357 consecutive games, uh, football games, since I've missed one. It was 95 was the last game I actually missed. So you must have called some games Chelmsford versus Acton, though, too. Oh, I called them all. Yeah. I called them all. <laughs> the first one was fine. It was fantastic. You yeah. know, 28-21, Chelmsford on top. Yeah. And then we went 10 years <laughs> and never won a game. And, of course, the people from Acton would continually say to me, I thought you guys had a football team. I thought you were good. Yeah. And three of those years were Super Bowl years. So yeah. it, the heartbreak of not only losing to them but losing in the Super Bowl was uh, was really kind of a, a, a tough thing, a tough pill to swallow. But and what uh, do you think of the athletes though that are, keep coming through Chelmsford and, and playing football and and how we keep just developing such a great program from the band and those kind of things? I mean, why why are we why or why do we think we're special in those kind of things? But I think we, we've we've got something we've got a good niche. We do, and I think a lot of it has to do with the kind of people who are leading them. Uh, the, the, the leaders, the teachers, the, uh, uh, the faculty in Chelmsford, uh, the coaching, um, the parents, it's all, it's all a big, uh, right now I think we have one of the finest booster clubs in Massachusetts uh, high school sports. They, they are just so active, they work so hard. Um, coaches put the time in, uh, and the kids are dedicated. They, they're committed, they, they really want to do well. Um, fine young men and women. In, Bleed in, maroon and white. They do. They do. <laughs> it's ingrained. You know, we vaccinate them with a, a phonograph uh, maroon and white needle, and uh, that's what they have to live with. Now, you don't seem ever to slow down, and your other passion right now is golf? Yes, golf uh, uh, became... Uh, that was one of the reasons I think I went into teaching. I had my summers <laughs> off. Okay. I could yeah. play golf as much as I wanted, and I've uh, been with when golf did you for a find long time. A, when did you find your passion for golf? I started when you started in, teaching? Or? No, it was, uh, it was maybe a year or two before that, and yeah. the first two times I played, I hated it. I thought this was the dumbest thing you could possibly do. And I went out, and friends dragged me out a few more times, and um, it got to be something that I really, really fell in love with. I just... Uh, you, you can, uh, you never achieve perfection. I know in your, your athletic career, Heather, um, you probably felt that way too at times. You, you yeah. can't get to the, the very, very best. There's always one shot, one swing that, gee, I wish I didn't do that. But yeah, it's, it's such a challenge and it's a great, plus the fact you meet good people. Well, the yeah, yeah. The, the camaraderie of yes, golf. Yes, that's those. right. And that's what it is today. I used to be a competitive golfer. I'm not anymore. But I, you did win some tournaments. I did. I, won, I was fortunate enough to win, um, um, I th think it's two uh, city tournaments, senior city tournaments. I played in uh, 12 regular city tournaments. I actually finished third in one of them. And uh, it, it was fun. I was a club champion at um, Nab Nasset a couple of times, over at Chelmsford many times. Um, so I'm, I, I'm, I'm bragging about myself, and I don't mean to do that. That's, this that's, is about you. Oh, okay. So, so you get to do that. <laughs> well, those, those were the, you know, those were the things that, that I did that were uh, special. And golf still is, 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 a, is a real hobby. I love it. Uh, I can't play the competitive level that I once did, but... Uh, 
But you can like, change your swing. I mean, that's yeah, a, that's, and that's a great the good thing, thing about right? golf. You know, the fact that the, the guys that I play with, we're all aging together. Right. So we're all getting awful together, <laughs> and, we can, and we can still compete. And, and that's really, uh, really what it's all about. It's fun. Um, did you pa pass that on to your, your kids, too? The My daughter plays a little bit. My son plays a little bit. They're both uh, pretty involved in their careers. My son is a firefighter here in Chelmsford. Okay. Uh, he, uh, so he followed your grandfather? He followed his, his grandfather, that's yep. right. And uh, he uh, really uh, is involved in his job. He likes his job. He likes the guys he works with. Um, I, I guess I can fit this in. There's a... Uh, a Bill Cohane coming up in another interview real soon, and he and Bill are, have worked together quite a bit, and uh, just just good people. And he and he really he's working at the fire academy now, which he really enjoys too over in Stowe. Yeah. So that's his career. He's going to be a firefighter f for life, and uh, um, it's a good career. Well, it, yeah. I know a few police officers and stuff. I'm sure like you that. do. Um, <laughs> but. I guess it goes to the same thing that we've been talking about, the just the the, the town dynamics, right? right. And right. who you meet, yeah. who, who yeah. you know in Chelmsford. Yeah. And, and I think that it's always being passed on, right? Sure, to, sure. To it's a pride thing. Correct. You know, you take pride in uh, your town, your pride in your job. You want to do it well. Um, that, that's, I think, so important in, in everything. Yeah. It's, it's just been great. Uh, um, but... Besides the golf and all these other things, um, when you talk about football again, let's go back mm. to that. Mm. Is there a team that you've ever said was as good as some of the teams that you were? When oh, you were sure. In F football. Chelmsford's been blessed with uh, terrific. Because I know back in the the, yeah. the early '60s, everybody talked about how go how good football was. Exactly. Uh, is there a, a team that you remember calling right now or, or coming up or whatever that you thought th might be the best team that Chelmsford had? Um, boy, that's, that's a hard question to answer because yeah. there's been so many good ones. The last Super Bowl team was a, a terrific football team. Uh, they won at Gillette on a, a last-minute field goal. Um, that, that team was, was, what year was that? special. And I, I, I knew you were going to ask that. <laughs> I think it was 2008, but I'm not positive. Yeah. It, was, it was in that, in that vicinity. Yeah. Um, it, it was just a, uh, just a special group of kids. Yeah. Uh, but they've had, some, they've had some others that have been really good, too. They, uh, they were undefeated in uh, Kevin Branco's uh, senior year. He was a quarterback, won a Super Bowl. Uh, I think that was 94 or 95. Um, that was the last game of the year that I missed a game. And I, I got sick, and they put me in the hospital. And I said to the doctor, I have to leave. He said, you're not going anywhere. He put me on an IV. He said, you are not leaving this room. So that, that was why I, it broke my heart. But I was so sick, I almost didn't care. <laughs> it, was, it was like, yeah, okay, if you insist I have to stay here, I'll stay here. Right. But I saw some great athletes in uh, football. Ani Holtberg was, was one that comes to mind real quick. Yeah. Um, you know, just so many others that I, I wish I'd made a list of, of guys that uh, were just They're probably special. in the Hall of Fame. A lot of them are. Yeah. yeah. Bobby Gleason was one that uh, with, I, he was back in 57. I, I don't know if you remember Bobby at all, but he was probably the best running back football player I've, I've seen in Chelsea. He played as an eighth grader. And uh, led the Merrimack Valley Conference in scoring as an eighth grader. And then he unfortunately banged up his knee, but he had to miss a year. But he came back. The Gleason family was outstanding. Yep. Uh, Freddie, his brother, Danny, in class of 64, I believe. Uh, they were just a great, uh, uh, yeah. great, great athletic family. And now, you, you say that, but uh, my parents obviously grew up in Chelmsford and my grandparents. So, of course, you know the Gleason name and those kind yep. of things. <laughs> yeah, yeah, abs um, absolutely. Because that's kind of what it, what it is about, right? The athletes, everybody seemed to remember, and there was always nicknames now, of you, certain people. Did you have a, a, a brother that pl uh, played football? Or, uh, I did. What was his first name? Russell. Russ, that's right. <laughs> and, and probably the best wide receiver that Chumps has ever had. <laughs> oh, that was my cousin Nate. Nate, okay. Yep, yep. yep. Nate, just so, fantastic. Uh, right. And the combination of he and... Uh, the quarterback uh, escapes me. The name escapes me, but he, his son just played at Andover too. 
his wife made him leave town. <laughs> and they tried to drag and, and scream to keep the kid in town, but he's had a great career over in Andover. But yeah. what a combination they were. Yeah. And outstanding. Yep. Um, then he obviously followed. Super Bowl. That could have been. Yeah. You know, I think of that team. That could have been the best team, too. And with uh, Tommy Cato's son. And, right. Uh, just outstanding football team. Yeah. Yeah. Danny Curran was on that team. Who's now, know, at, who's now at Merrimack. It was the head coach at Merrimack. Yep. That's right. Um, and, you know, you, 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 these names pop into your head. And you're, oh, Danny was right, uh, you know, at the top, too. You know, you can't. It was, it's so hard to uh, rank these guys. Right. But, yeah. So was, in overall, like, though, what would you say, though, was the biggest thing from high school to what you learned in high school to your teaching when you were at Acton? Communication, teamwork. Yeah. Um, just uh, um, dedication, uh, be willing to go the extra mile, uh, stay up at night and plan something, uh, get the kids hopefully to work together. I, I have never seen uh, a, a school, uh, a, an athletic team successful that didn't work together as a as a unit. They, you have to be together, right. and if you get that, you're you're blessed, uh, and that's that's what it's all about. It's just as you say that, right? And you get to talk to your daughter, and she's teaching, mm. and everybody says, "Oh, the teachers, you know, don't get the respect and those things." And mm. and kids have changed, which I'm not really sure. Students have changed. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yep. And yep. and I'm in the educational world right now too. Right. Um, but. When you talk to your daughter, what, what kind of advice did you give her when she first started? And, and have students changed? Maybe, uh, maybe I'm wrong. I... I think one of the first things I said to her was be willing to listen. Um, you can learn from your students. You are the teacher, but be willing to listen to what they have to say because they have a great deal to offer you as, an, as a person, individual. And if they feel as though you're willing to, to listen to them, I think that goes a long way to having success. Uh, you can't just go in and, as you know, uh, it's my way or the highway. And it, that's, I don't think that works. So. And I think that that's one of those things that the, the coaches have always had success at Chelmsford, right? Sure, as sure. Listening to, to Listen. the student athletes and, that's right. and, and driving that. Yeah. Um, I think that's, those are certainly words to, to live by, though, right? If, if people yeah. would do more listening yeah. and not, have, not yeah. believe that, that they have for, all the That answers. was hard for me to learn because yep. I think part of it was fear. I didn't want to let people think I, I wasn't able to control things and I wasn't the boss. And, but I, I learned that, uh, you know, step back, uh, shut up once in a while and, and listen to what your students are saying and um, letting them make suggestions. We used to have meetings that... Uh, what are we doing that's good? What are we doing that's not so good? Um, and those, those are learning uh, op options. Just, just like math and social studies, you learn by uh, doing things like that. So. Well, Bruce, I've so enjoyed talking to you. I'm so glad you joined me here at Where Are They Now? Um, and I hope that our viewers come back and keep listening to us here at Where Are They Now? Thank you so much for being with me. Heather, thank you, and you're a master at what you do. <laughs> I'm listening. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. I think we did a really good job.